So there was some. There was some other voted pictures from our trip. Um, we'll have some more online. There's a Facebook group if you want to check it out. Um, you can find it online. We have more pictures up there, more media as well. This morning we have an opportunity for the students to share their experience of Urban Plunge. If you don't know what Urban Plunge is, Urban Plunge is a week-long mission trip to Santa Cruz. We stay at a camp called Mission Springs. We help set up their summer camp. Um, they service, they have about over 1,500 people that come through their camp in a given summer. All those are students that get to hear and experience the love of God, and hopefully take one step closer. And we help set up camp. We set up 27 cabins, we put canvases on there, and we clean them out. We set up a whole bunch of other stuff, and we knock it out. Uh, we had 25 students come this year, uh, and you get to hear from a couple of them. So, if you're ready, come on down. My name is Emily, and I went on Urban Pledge 11. When we were doing the work, we were able to talk a lot about our lives. We were able to get, really get to know each other a lot more than we had in our PM at school and any other event that we had seen each other before. And um, we were able to see how God was working in each other's lives. And I saw that God did does amazing things in other people's lives. A lot more than I notice in other people's testimonies. A lot more than we see on the news. A lot more than we see in the media ever. God works in people's lives a million times more than we ever see. And I saw that if God can change a person's life that much, then he can surely change mine. Amen. If God can change a person's situation and make it for their good, he can change mine. Amen. If God can sculpt a person's life and give them hope, then he can give me hope. Yes. And then, um, we went to Elm Street Mission one of the days. Wednesday. Wednesday. We went to Elm Street Mission. And I got to talk to this homeless guy. And he was awesome. Every sentence, he was pro proclaiming the name of God. Every sentence. We don't do that. And he was homeless. He was in devastation. He was down in the dumps. He was in his worst situation. Yet he was proclaiming the name of God. What faith he has. We, a lot of us, hide God from the world. A lot of us are ashamed of God, yet he is proclaiming it because he knows that, that is his only hope out of the situation that he's in. If he is so adamant about God, and he is so hurt, and he is so um, just, he doesn't have a home, he doesn't have anything, then why can't we share the name of God? God has given us so much yet we are so timid about it. God has blessed us, yes. and we don't want to share it. We need to share it so that other people can know. Because he was proclaiming the name of God, and he was my role model. He, the homeless guy, was my role model because he was proclaiming the name of God in his devastation, and he was proclaiming it more than me. He was so amazing, you know, and it just blows my mind how crazy it was that he was proclaiming the name of God more than some of the deacons in this church. He was proclaiming the name of God more than, he was proclaiming the name of God more than a lot of people a lot of the Christian people that you see everywhere. Every single sentence he was saying about anything. We were talking about Phil. God gave us Phil. He was talking about anything. God gave us this. God gave us that. It was all about God. We need to be like that. We need to be, oh, God gave us this. We did not create this situation. God created the situation. God, we did not get ourselves into 
this math test. God brought us to this math test. God gave us the A. We did not create the A for ourselves. God gave us the A. We did not do this for ourselves. God did it for us. Only God. And then we were able to pass out lunches to the people that are homeless in downtown, downtown Santa Cruz. Downtown Santa Cruz. I was not on the team who made the lunches. I was on the team who um, cleaned up L Street Mission. But um, we, when we got to pass them out, it was so amazing because people accepted them. And we wrote little messages on the back saying, God bless you. John 316, God loves you. God is there for you. You know? Just sharing God. And it was amazing. People were so happy to receive them. And we take for granted these little things. We take for granted food. We take for granted a house. We should thank God for them. Because they could be gone in the blink of an eye. All of this could be gone. We came up to this group of people, homeless guys, all different nationalities, holding flags of what country they came from. They were all singing, Oh, Home on the Rain. We started singing with them and handing out lunches. It was amazing because we were able to connect with them on a level that we wouldn't have if we hadn't done that. Even if we hadn't given the lunches and just sang with them, we wouldn't have, able, we wouldn't have been able to connect with them on that level. If we had just um, handed out the lunches and not sang with them, we wouldn't have been able to connect with them on that level. But because we sang with them, it was like demoting ourselves to their level and then giving them what we had. It was amazing. We were able to really connect with them. And they were very happy. And their faces just beamed. They were astounding. They were so happy. They started singing the song louder. They started, they said, God bless you. They started praising over us. Yeah. That was amazing. You know, they started praying for us. I had not experienced that before, and it was amazing. So, don't take for granted what you have, and praise God for everything. Amen. Amen. bonfires more just like that you guys saw in the photos um, we had like a little dance party type of thing and um, we grew a lot of friendships and some of the work that we did was going or staying at where we were staying and we did a lot of um, just cleaning up like washing the mattresses for the people who come during the summertime like the students so that they have a nice place to stay and then we went also to Camp Hammer and they had three like different groups split up. The boys went and worked on a house or something, yeah. Um, some of the girls, they went up to um, Apostle, which is basically, it's like in the middle of the Redwoods. The whole campus, but we were more, I don't know, in the Redwoods. And we did um, just like raking all of the debris and just stuff off of the ground and we just made it more flat and a nicer area for them to set up tents and stuff like that and then some people stayed down like on the campgrounds and they cleaned up I don't know what you guys did you just cleaned up you weeded and did, yeah all that stuff <laughs> um, but specifically on Thursday night 
we did God spottings, and um, I heard a lot of oh, God spottings is basically where you just say throughout the day, like, how did you see God working in your life or through others? And that night, I heard a lot of God spottings, and um, it it touched me, and I knew it was God, obviously doing all of it, and. So he gave us these little pamphlets um, to write down, like, our devotions. And one of the, on Thursday night, it was talking about taking it home and, like, how, how are we going to bring this to our lives when, once we get back from the <coughs> plunge. And I started writing off, like, how I was going to share that with all of you guys. But then my mind just kind of focused on one thing. And so... Starting off, I said, um, during Urban Plunge, we had to go through the dirt, and we had to go through the mud, and it was just, like, it was very intense, and we had to get all dirty, and even though we were doing it for God, and even though we were doing it for a good situation, and doing it for those students who were going there, and going on Wednesday when we went to Elm Street Mission, we had to bring ourselves down so that we can fit in with everybody else there and make them feel loved. And, like I said, even though we went through the dirt and mud, at that point we still had, maybe some of us held it in more than others, maybe some of us only could wash our hands at the time, maybe some of us were able to come back that day and wash their whole body off, but there was always a time when we were able to clean ourselves up. And so, um, I was thinking that night, well, how, how can I bring that and use it for our world, or how can I compare it to us, and I said, I was thinking that um, as Christians, we sometimes still go through situations or we have things or parts of our lives that we still need to clean up. And sometimes, um, through the grace of God, we can only clean some parts because we sometimes still want, to, still want to hold on to different things. But in one way or another, having the grace of God, we're able to clean our whole, whole selves up. And um, so that really stuck out to me because I saw a lot of the students who went, that they all had situations, whether it be at home, whether it just be them themselves, they still had different parts that they were holding on to. And I don't remember exactly what night it was, but we also got to share our testimonies. And a lot of us were kind of shy about it, but some of us like actually shared, which inspired other people to share um, what they were going through. And we bonded over it a lot. And people were healing their hearts, healing from situations. And that was like the most amazing part to me that I'll always remember is that through all of us, even being just in high school, some of the leaders, we were able to share what we had been through in the past and how God has worked through our lives and by all of it being the grace of God. And so with the theme of Urban Plunge, the verse, it was talking about giving glory to God. And so I just thank the Lord that all of us got to experience that and just got to see how God worked in each of our lives and just healed us. So I just thank you for that. Good morning, church. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Okay, so I didn't plan very well and I always wing it and it always works out. So <laughs> we're just gonna keep doing it. Okay, so like Sophia said, we had a theme verse for Urban Plunge and it was Colossians 3.17. And Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father. And I was a little naive, and I was just like, oh, it's just a verse that we put on the shirt. And I never really, like, looked into it or applied it when I was at Urban Plunge. And whenever I go on trips like, like Urban Plunge or Chick, I kind of get, like, self-absorbed. Like, I'm, like, so excited for what I can take out of the trip, and I don't really, like, look around me and apply it anywhere else. Um, and then God, I think he kind of picked up on that and then just started working that out. <laughs> um, yeah. Just it. Um, and so it took me a long time to figure out what I was going to share with you guys. And then I was talking to my mom and I was thinking, I'm like, 
you know what, like, why, why do we even go to church? Like, what, like, what's the point? Like, why do we come here every Sunday? And then it's like, oh, because you want to get a message. You want to hear something. You want to take the message, and you want to apply it to your life. And I was thinking over those statements that I just said in my head, and I said, oh, what message do I want to take away from church today? How am I going to use this in my life? What am I receiving from God today? What am I, what am I, what am I? The whole time. And so all week, I was pondering over these questions, and I was hoping that God would just hit me with an experience at Urban Plunge that was just going to change all of that. And I got to Friday, and I'm like, what am I going to share? Nothing stuck out to me. And it's because I was looking for something that happened to me. All the experiences that I had at Elm Street, and with all the homeless people, I'm like, why is nothing coming to me? And on Wednesday, we got the chance to share our testimonies, and Emily shared a beautiful testimony that was very moving, and um, I was like really proud of her. And so um, I sat down, I talked to her, and she told me, she's like, you are my role model, and I always look up to you. And usually I'd be like, oh, like that's a compliment, like thank you, that means a lot. And I was looking back and I'm like, okay, this really sucks because I've been here this whole week and I've been doing everything for myself and then other people are looking at me and they're picking up on that. And so what are they learning from that? I'm like, I want to be something that I can project to other people so that they can take away from me and they can take away from my message, not just me take away from what God is trying to show me. Amen. And so... After Emily's testimony, I looked at everything differently, and after talking to her, and she didn't mean to set me in my place, but she did. <laughs> and so, when I started writing down what I was gonna share with you guys, everything um, started to flow out. And the moral of everything to take away from this is that just your mere presence plays a large role in everything that happens every day. So when you go to church, it's not just to get a message for yourself, it's to affect everybody else around you. Maybe you don't know what your purpose is at church, but there's other people that are seeing you, and there's other people that are picking up on that. It's not just to take what you've heard and let it affect your own life, but to take your knowledge and be something for other people. It's to be the image of God, not God yourself. Yes. Amen. <laughs> So, uh, two things, first off, that I want to put out there is, one, if you don't know who I am, my name is Chance, and if you guys were here in the Christmas Eve service, I was the guy who totally choked in front of everybody. So first off, I'm up here to talk about Urban Plunge, and second is to let you all know that I can read indeed. So there's that. I can read, it's, you know, I can see words and whatnot. So, first off, I do want to thank all of you guys, all students, all the leaders, you guys were absolutely fantastic. These guys deserve a huge round of applause. They're just honestly amazing on um, Urban yeah. Plunge. Just huge, huge servants. Uh, and really what I want to focus on is something that my wife has been talking about for the past week, and honestly just forever, and that's her little catchphrase. Man, I'm like shaking. I'm up here every Sunday. I'm like, <gasps> I just don't want to say the wrong thing. Okay, so, <laughs> but, uh, maybe I just need to say that now. Let's get a little loosey-goosey. So, so she says she says sometimes it's hard to actually kind of go out of your way and plant a seed that you don't actually see grow. That you don't physically see your work, your hard work, that gets done. And so that seed was the prior week or the prior month or even prior few months before the plunge even happened. And we were asking for donations, we were asking for your encouragement and for your prayers. And you guys totally did your part. But I understand that sometimes it's, a, it's difficult. Sometimes you just, you know, I'll just maybe wait till next month, you know, to maybe help out. But, because you guys can't see that, that week, you know, yeah, we can post pictures on, 
on, on Facebook, you guys can follow along a little bit, but you, you're not in the action, and I know that's difficult. But I'm here to tell you that without seeing, it is so easy to describe the absolute servants these kids are. Amen. That without you guys, the church, because sometimes just kids can't pay for it, but pay for it. They can't. That's just how it is. Even us adults sometimes struggle to find the money. But, like, imagine this church without a youth program. I don't even know. I, I, I don't even know what, how it would be. I couldn't even, couldn't even imagine it without a youth program. And so you guys, the church, with donations, prayers, and encouragement towards these kids, just changed, not changed just their lives, but the people that they reached out to. So it's just, it's just the domino effect that you guys have been, have been helping out. Because then they get to go on Urban Plunge, and then they reach out to someone, and that person reaches out, reaches out, reaches out. And that's the whole reason why we're here, is to share the gospel. And that is how you share that gospel. It's huge, absolutely huge, and you guys are a huge part of that. You guys are definitely just the driving force. And so I wanted to thank them and you guys, the church, the whole church body, because it is not just us out there doing it. It is you guys. Because you guys influence us. So I just want to that out for you guys. And then my, my closing uh, comment would say to uh, the man, the myth, the legend, that, um, that set this up and just has been a huge inspiration to me and all of our fellow leaders. I would probably speak for them too. Uh, is Zach. Zach Pinnell. Everybody. Talk about being thrown into the den, into the lion's den. This guy, first off, you have to be crazy enough to pay to go do hard labor, so that's just on top of it, you know. So, but this guy came in and he just jumped right into Chick with all the kids, and now he just jumped right into Urban Plunge. And, and I already talked to him about this, but sometimes people have expectations. And that's just how it is. We all can't say, man, that second guy was so much better than the last. <laughs> but he is! <laughs> we'll keep that to ourselves. <laughs> no, no. But I just, no, I just wanted to put it out that, that Zach came in and he, he's just loving on these kids. Yes. Absolutely loving on these kids like a father. And that's really how it should be. This man has just come in, and you guys have supported him, and you guys have brought him in, and so have the kids and all the leaders. We've just let him in rather than holding him to this huge expectation because of, of, of Dave, or even before Dave, you know? Right. And so it is, I just want to lift up this man because he just came in and just rock solid on, on his first urban plunge. And uh, yeah, that's really how I want to end it. Thank you guys. Yeah.